Afternoon everyone, beautiful day today. I'm at the Australian National Air Museum in Moorabbin and uh, want to go in and see what it's like, uh, check out what aircraft are here and just give you some basic information. So let's go in and check it out. Hi guys, this is the entry into the museum. As you can see, there's a model Spitfire, I think it is, uh, and several other uh, memorabilia that you can purchase once you walk in. Um, some model aircraft up on the walls there. It's actually quite nice. Have a look at that. And also you can get some t-shirts. Might look at getting one on the way back. So yeah, this is quite nice. Um, good entry point. And let's go and check out the aircraft now. So we've walked through the entrance and uh, I've got to keep the mask on, unfortunately. Um, we've just been released from lockdown, so... And I'm just entering in here, which is the hangar with all the aircraft. So let's have a look. So as you walk in, you get the Mirage 3. Um, the awesome plane, which was used in the RAAF quite some time. Behind me here you see a gypsy moth. Uh, I believe they were used in World War I. Uh, fantastic plane, you know, it's the, virtually the start of aviation. Uh, a historic, a historic plane, anti-submarine missile. Uh, I don't know much about it, but uh, it looks deadly. The Havilland Sea Venom, which was uh, the first jet aircraft used in the RAN, uh, Royal Australian Navy. So uh, I've uh, got a chance to actually go up and have a look at the cockpit. So let's hop in and have a look. I can fit in there without any liposuction. <laughs> wow, that looks pretty tight. Um, still, I'll jump in. And have a look. Wow, this is really tight. There's not much room at all. Uh, I guess you have to be pretty slender to fit, fit into these planes and fly them. Awesome though. Oh, the instruments in here, I'll just show you now. I don't know what any of it means, but uh, wow, looks very complicated. So you front view from the jet. Another awesome plane. I believe they served in Korea as well. I'm not too sure, but let's check it out. Well, there is absolutely no way I'm going to fit in there. Absolutely no way. <laughs> it's. It's uh, it's way too small. I would need some serious liposuction to fit in there. behind me here was uh, a Spitfire but it's not uh, it's got a Rolls-Royce engine in it and it is it 
it's amazing you see these planes in so many war movies uh, World War II movies and to actually be in front of them and uh, just look at the sheer size of them and actually it's amazing the flying they did because uh, you know they didn't have navigation um, no sat nav or anything like that it was all done with compass so it was awesome now this is a plane I've been wanting to see for a long time bow fighter uh, and it was extensively used over uh, the defense of Australia uh, against the Japanese in World War II. Uh, it was an awesome plane. Again, I've seen a lot of uh, clips on this uh, aircraft. Amazing plane. And uh, they, you know, they stood up to the Zeros. Uh, zeros were faster, but uh, they, uh, they did their business. They kept uh, the Japanese at bay. Tiger Moth, used in World War One, as we would know. So I don't have to wear the mask in the in the when I'm out of the enclosed area. And uh, so I've stepped out here just to see what they've got out here. Wow, look at the size of this beast. It's huge. Look at that. I don't know what it is, but I'll check it out now. Let's have a look. got a vintage bus in here. I don't know what the vintage bus uh, is here for, but uh, yeah, we'll go and have a look at that too. I found my tour guide. This is awesome. I mean, uh, look at that. I've got a tour guide. Fantastic. He doesn't speak much English, but uh, he just hangs around and looks good I suppose. This is nice. Now, apparently this is how you enter the aircraft. Fat chance of me fitting in there. Absolutely no way. The gentleman there told me that uh, this is a Canberra bomber. Uh, I don't know where it served but uh, you know it's been in the Australian Air Force obviously. Uh, probably in the 60s or 50s. plane behind me here is a uh, freight carrier so I suppose they transported troops or cargo or whatever that was needed logistics and the front of the aircraft actually opens up so I guess that's where they loaded in their jeeps or whatever else they needed but, uh, let's hop in and have a look wow there's a lot of tables in you now but uh I guess they couldn't carry too much. Uh, commercial plane, um, I guess back in the 50s or early 60s, or maybe even mid 60s, I'm not sure. But uh, looks quite good, isn't it? It's TAA. Uh, Australia had a few airlines that actually went under in the early 70s, and TAA happened to be one of them. Uh, we're heading into the helicopters here. I'll, I'll show you this monster. It's huge. Now, I've seen some footage of this plane in action and it is awesome. Uh, it was used in the Australian uh, Air Force and also in the Navy uh, because the wings actually can fold over. I don't know if this one uh, has that capability but uh, look at it behind me. It is massive. It's huge. As old Donald Trump would say, it's huge. Check this out. It is awesome.
very much an unsung hero, it was vital in its anti-submarine and subsequent airborne early warning roles, and indispensable as the fleet's mail courier. Redesigning a highly modified gannet, capable of carrying the AN APS-20 search radar. Well, the Gloucester Meteor behind me uh, was the first jet fighter flying in 1943. Uh, that's surprising, you know, because I thought the Germans had a Messerschmitt that actually was the first aircraft, the first fighter jet that was in service. But I didn't know. I didn't know this. Uh, so it's like everything, you know. You learn something every day, and they got a little rampart, uh, so I can walk up and have a look inside. Let's see if I can fit into this one. Unfortunately, I don't think I can fit in there. Uh, I'm a little bit claustrophobic, I think. There's not much room. There's absolutely no room. But what I find interesting is uh, it's old school vintage seating, you know? It's like a Triumph Spitfire seat. Uh, it's an old car that I used to have. And uh, it just looks awesome. You know, it's, it's 1940s uh, and the decor represents it in this jet. More up there. Let's, let's throw in I think this is uh, a more modern plane, uh, probably commercially used, and there's a ramp to walk up there and uh, have a look at the cockpit and so forth. So I'll head in there and see if I can fit in this one. Wow, this is a lot better. quite nice guys uh, I can actually fit in here <laughs> it's made for two uh, but you know it's nice um, it's a more modern plane obviously uh, and uh, you know all the controls here I have no idea what any of it is but I think it's a it was a passenger liner uh, uh, so pretty much brings me to the end of my tour in here uh, and I'll show you the passenger area there it's uh, it sort of resembles a modern day uh, uh, passenger liner uh, probably not as big as uh, the modern ones but it looks, looks quite swish I guess well it's for the time still it is pretty tight getting in and out of here but have a look behind me it's quite nice Overhead luggage compartments. God, it makes me want to go on holidays already. Hi guys, uh, well I hope you enjoyed that tour, uh, it was really nice, uh, spend a bit of time, you can actually interact, get into the cockpit of the plane and uh, you know, see if you fit in. <laughs> Unfortunately I, I couldn't fit in most of it, I'm a little bit on the oversize, oversize I think, but uh, come down and have a look, it's a nice little place. Till next time, be good to each other, be kind and I shall see you see you again soon